Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. The first question that came up today was neck tension and uh, how is that related to tension in the in the in the legs or particularly in the calf muscles. So the so like, okay, I noticed that there's some tension in my my calves, but I'm also feeling it in my in my neck as at the, at the same time. What is uh, is there a relationship there? And there actually is. There is uh, it's something I think that is uh, uh, we don't often make that connection, but there is a superficial back layer of fascia that the fascia is that you know that connective tissue that organizes muscle groups, and there is a type of fascia that extends from the bottoms of your feet, your plantar fascia, and extends up the backs of your legs, up through your buttocks, your back, your neck, and goes actually to the top of your head. And it's one continuous sheet. And that it's, in my observation, is something that um, as we, uh, we deal with like, the stresses of and rigors of life that there's a tendency to to bunch that up particularly initiates in the achilles tendon it's called a tendon guard reflex it's one of these primitive stress responses that cues that that fascia to shorten as a way of protecting yourself so it um, may not even be uh conscious stresses but there's there's something in, in the system something that you're encountering in your environment or in your experience that is that is triggering a uh, uh, this uh, st stress response this unconscious stress response and it it tightens that up so the uh, uh, the lengthening of that will actually create more uh, slack in the rope you get more more of a uh, more room to play with there. So the lengthening it, you know, by, you know, forward stretches, things like that, where you're, you're actually, you know, bowing forward and feeling the pull in your hamstrings and your calves, all the way from your feet, and feel it all the way up to the top of your head. It's something that if, you know, if you were to lie on your back and I were to pump your foot, you would find that you would notice that your head was bobbing up and down like that if I was push, rocking your foot back and forth. And that's because there is that, that continuous line there. So uh, the, the, I guess the, the easy fix on it is to become aware that that is what is occurring, that it's not disconnected in any way that, you know, the, the neck and the, and the, and the and the calves, it's they're both part of this this one line of fascia, and it would, just by doing that and just letting go and ah, getting more sung in your body will actually change your the, you know the the way that you're you're holding your body. The other thing too is you know if you're driving a lot, you know there's a ways that we sit in a in a car that will will shorten. The, uh, the the at least temporarily shorten that the fascia, tighten up the muscles, and and so by doing that, so a lot of it has to do with just lengthening the the fascia to be able to create more space, and that will actually make everything a little easier because if there is a sense of of being tight in your back, in your neck, in your butt, legs then it will trigger other stress responses in your body and you'll get this feeling like everything is just closing in on you and you'll have that feeling of, of, of anxiousness that comes with that. So creating more space actually allows everything to just kind of alleviate and creates more of a, ah, an easy flow. So moving on. Uh, one thing that I've been writing about lately, I think I wanted to, wanted to share with you, and it's, it's a point of focus. I've mentioned it on occasion, but I think it's, I want to kind of bring it into the conversation we've been having lately. And that is the, 
relationship we have to the moment in, into uh, via our awareness, how that how that changes the way we actually inhabit our bodies and how we use our bodies, how we actually are able to to move. And the the distinction I'm making here is that whenever you are I'll put it this way, in the simplest terms, every inner has an outer and every outer has an inner. That is any form that you can occupy or perceive is going to have either an outer and an inner. If you are observing something or thinking about something, you are looking at it from the outside. You are thinking about it. And that creates a certain type of relationship, what I call an object-based consciousness. But it's where you're, you're turning things into thoughts so that you can organize those thoughts and talk them out just like I'm doing right now. And to the extent that you're able to create language that represents things and makes it, uh, makes it sensible to yourself and maybe to other people, then you are able to have a coherent body of knowledge and that's kind of cool that's what hu we humans do really really well the trick is that we do it so well that it's kind of we get locked into that so that we get what's called a stream of consciousness that is the thoughts just keep churning 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 and there's this unending litany of ideas that keeps getting pushed out by the brain by the nervous system and it's you know it, it's what it does it likes to keep churning that out but it's actually a very small part of what the brain does and the nervous system does uh, but it happens to be the thing that gets most of our attention It's the we are suckers for a good story and in in the absence of a good story we'll tune in anything that the brain is popping out and even if uh, the, the story is, hey, Rick, you suck, you know, that's, uh, that is that, that's the language that of, of, of the, of the nervous system, just spewing out whatever it's, it's, it's doing. When we are inside, we are occupying, we shift into a different state of awareness. We move into a non-objective awareness. So if I am looking at me and thinking about me and talking about me, I am, I've turned Rick into an object, an object of thought that I can, that I can analyze, I can talk about how tall I am or, or the color of my hair or whatever, you know, whatever I'm thinking right now, I can create a, a narrative that I'm updating moment by moment and saying, this is what I'm doing now. And this is what I'm doing now. And this is what I'm thinking about now, etc. And that is all that everything, it becomes objective and objectified. So anytime you're objectifying something, everything becomes an object. And that is so prevalent that we kind of think that there's no other way, that this stream of consciousness is unending. And it is, it's very much ending. It's something where we create, you know, I've talked about it before, the gap between thoughts, where you're creating a space there where it's, you're not thinking. And thinking, I'm, I'm using thinking in, in very distinct terms here. And that is, it's an active process that the mind engages in. It's not uh, not just anything that the brain is doing. It's just, it's something that is very active. It's when you are creating symbolic representations of what's going on. You're talking, thinking, you're, you're making up a story about what's going on. And this is how we humans organize things and, and have lots of fun talking to each other and and doing cool stuff like that. But it gets in the way if you can't control it. If you can learn to shift out of that and into the gap between thoughts, if only for a moment, then you're able to move inside 
and clear the buffer. You clear the mind and you're then able to choose which direction you want your thoughts to go. You can also choose to have no thoughts and to move into a state where you can know without thinking. So remember that this thinking I'm talking about is an active process. So it's if we go into this, the, the, the gap between thoughts where we're, the thinking is suspended, we have moments where it's just now. We are actually in the present moment. And this is where the fun begins for us as internal martial artists, because this is where we can actually access the hidden powers, the mysteries of Taiji Chuan. We can't really get there if we are external to the process, if we are thinking about what's going on, or we are observers of the process, even if it's like, okay, I'm going to move my hand in this way, and here I'm going to move it in this way, and oh, what's the next move, and da, da, da. If that is where I'm at, then I'm only getting a very small part of what's possible in the potentiality of the internal martial arts. Whenever we move into that, we occupy that, that state where we've suspended the thinking part and we've moved, moved into a whole brain coherence, we then move into a state of wholeness. And that allows us to access abilities that are not present in a more fragmented state. So all this is kind of abstract, but it's incredibly practical. It's something that is, is the difference between being able to access your jin, your internal power, versus the, the crude muscular power that comes from muscular contraction. And if that is where the, the, the fun is in, in Taiji Chuan, it's also where we open up to the mystery. That's where we open up to what else is possible. And the way we do this, kind of bring this around, is if we can learn to feel as, and prioritize the feeling over the thinking, not dispensing the thinking dispensing with the thinking altogether, but just prioritizing it while we're, while we're executing the movements, we then are able to move into a superconscious state. And we can then think or not think anytime we want. And because we're, we have, we've opened up to the bigger room. We have something that is that allows for thinking, but is not limited to it. But if we try to enter through the eye of mind, we are always limited by the symbolic logic. We're always limited by the story that I want to tell. So it's, is this story better than that story? And we want to be able to move outside of that and just say, no story now. And then cool stuff happens. So, um, uh, anybody uh, have thoughts on that? Questions or comments? And that make any sense at all? Keith. By the way, hey guys, how you guys doing? I probably missed the last couple of weeks with the Appalachian trip we were all on. But that was very profound, Rick, on the fact that, you know, we had, in, in a lot of ways, parallel careers to a point. And one thing I did as a trainer and a mentor pretty much the last 25 years of my career, I was trying to teach, teach the concept of spatial awareness. When you started going into the place that you're at, that is what I tried to like instill as a tool to use 
you know, just on your daily basis, just to understand what's going on around you. And I know it's not the same and it's maybe a third grade level of where you're getting to, but when you start talking about that, it made so much very profound sense of watching the movie other than being, you know, directing the movie. That's it. Thanks, Keith. Um, anybody else? Okay, that uh, cool. Uh, so, how do we bring that into the practice? And that is, you know, through this idea of feeling, through the idea of of actually using a different part of our nervous system in order to get to where we want to go. And it's not to say we suspend the thinking entirely. We we don't. We are able to to make corrections and check out where am I now and be able to adjust our, let's say if we're doing a, a Tai Chi form, being able to adjust and say, okay, that's too much, back it off a bit, okay? And then you go back into feeling it again. So what it is, it's, it's training the mind to be able to, to do that, to be able to move into that feeling state and to get into, uh, uh, to, learn to prioritize that in in the way you're uh, uh, approaching the practice. So let's uh, let's take that and, and just do something very simple. And uh, but we want to take include into it the the exercise we've been playing with for a few weeks now that is to to get more familiar with the Sung Kwa. So being able to release into the support of your connective tissue by first of all, activating the yang impulse to push away from the earth and then uh, settle back in and feel the yin support that comes with that. And I've been playing a, a, a lot more with this and uh, I think it's very profound what uh, the potential that this type of uh, practice, this type of, of exercise does. You know, as I've said before, it's it's not the end of where we want to go. We want to get to a point where Sun Kwa becomes a thing that we just recognize and we immediately go there. But even though I've been playing with this stuff for a long time, it's you know, the idea of Sun Kwa, it's, I've, I've been making uh, considerable improvements just by making this as, as a focus in my practice so that I'm able to then carry that feeling with me and access it without necessarily going through that extra step. But let's, uh, why don't you stand up and we'll, uh, we'll do a couple of things. Okay, so let's begin with our three pillars. So feel the balls of both feet. Unlock your knees and feel your weight centering over the balls of the feet. Feel that contact point with the earth. And reach with the crown of your head. Tuck in the chin. This opens up the jade pillow gate. Relax your lower back and allow your sacrum to drop. And as you do that, check again, and you want to feel the balls of your feet again. Because sometimes whenever you make an adjustment, say in your in your back, you might want to there's a tendency to shift backward. You want to kind of get back and reestablish your central equilibrium again. Push away from the earth. So you're feeling that young impulse to, 
to extend upward. You're feeling that, that extension and then exhale and uh, release down and sink into the structure, sink into the, the support of your, your legs. Feel that. Notice any tension in your butt and in your legs, and then just push away again and uh, sink in and just feel feel that that yin support. See how much can how much muscular tension can I let go and still feel supported. Reach with your elbows, opening up the shoulder joints. Reach with the fingers, point your index fingers, feel that, feel the energetic coherence. Now we have, we've established the three pillars, the center equilibrium, the energetic coherence, and we've, Unkink the hose, opening the shoulder joints, the hip joints, open the jade pillow gate. So just push away from the earth again, just feel that young extension and hold that. And just feel what that feels like to extend upward. Feel the muscular contractions. And then exhale, release, sink down, and feel what it feels like to let go of that muscular contraction. You want to feel like your, your buttocks are very soft. <coughs> There's no tension there. Your lower back is very relaxed. Feel it your hands and, and notice the chi that's building up there. Now, bring your, set your elbows, reach with your elbows and bring your hands up. Feel the weight pressing down on your arms as you come up. And using the least amount of effort, the least amount of muscular contraction, you can bring your arms up, reach with your elbows. Take your palms, press down. Continue to reach with the crown of your head, even as you're sinking. If you find yourself Tensing up in your legs and your butt. Just kind of push away gently and ah, release again. Rotate the palms and carry. This time continue to press upward. Reach with your elbows. Rotate your palms so they're Pressing upward. Push away from the earth, pressing up and then sink, exhale, sink. But at the same time, you're still pressing up with your hands as you're sinking down into your legs. Feel this. Two poles in opposition, the young extension 
of the hands, the yin support in your legs. Rotate the palms and press down, sink. As your hands come to your waist, now push away from the earth as you continue to press down with the hands coming up and sink, release down. Hands up, pushing away from the earth. Rotate your right forearm. Actually, rotate both forearms, your right and your left. So your right palm is reaching upward. Your left palm is pushing downward, pushing away from the earth, and then sink as you reach up with the right and down with the left. So we're expanding this. We have a yang extension of the right hand, a yin extension of the left hand. Reaching up with the crown of the head, sinking down with the, with the legs. Now add to that, extend your awareness through your feet and reach down through your feet and into the earth. You actually feel like little tendrils extending down, little mental tendrils going down, reaching down into the earth. Rotate palms, right palm down, pressing down, left palm coming up, push away, Reaching up and sink. Feel those poles in opposition. Feel the stability that you get by extending your awareness down through your feet, reaching down into the earth. Extending those tendrils down, those tendrils of awareness. Now add to that and reach up through the crown of your head and extend tendrils of awareness through the crown, extending up into the heavens. Rotate the palms, left palm. Pushing down, right palm pushing up, push away. And sink, reach up, reach down. Relax your shoulders. You're reaching with the elbows, opening up the shoulder joints. Opening up the jade pillow gate. Feel the yin support of the legs, but also there's a yang extension through the feet as you're extending your awareness down through there. Reaching up through the crown, extending upward there. Rotate and press down. Push up with the left, down with the right, sink. Okay, bring your hands up. Now, this time, as you reach with the right hand, turn, push away from your turn to the right and sink. Now, 
Notice that you're favoring your right leg now. Your more right leg is more substantial. Feel that. Push away and sink into that right leg and just feel that yin support of the right leg. Feel the ball of the left foot. Set the left knee, push away with the left leg. Right hand comes down, left hand comes up. And sink and turn. Push away with the left hand, right down with the right. Feel the support of your left leg now. Feel the energy moving throughout the whole system, filling up whole body energetic connection. Going back to what I was talking about before, you're feeling into your body. You're not an observer, you're a participant. You're not thinking about the body, you're feeling it. You're feeling everything, but there's no story, they're just the feeling. You're capable of feeling throughout the whole system at once. Feel the ball of the right foot. Push away. Sink down to the left and bring your left right hand up, left hand down and turn. Feel that extension through your arms. Feel the connective tissue unwinding in your arms, creating more space. Feel that extension between your hands. Feel the, how they're connected, energetically connected, but also structurally connected. Feel the ball of the right foot, push away, sink down, spiral down to the right, right hand comes down, left hand comes up. Feel the ball of the left foot, sink and then push away and then coming up. Turn and sink. <sighs> Settle into that. Feel that extension, opening, opening the chest, opening the shoulders. big and open. Put the ball of the right foot, set the right knee spiral down to the left and then turn, bring both hands down. Pause for a moment and just feel into your, your structure. Feel the way the connective tissue is unified. We have that your connective tissue is the living matrix. It brings every cell in your body together into a unified whole. We create this state of wholeness, body, mind, spirit integration, we enter it through the feeling. And each time we go here, we open to bigger, to more chi. And with it comes more information that our conscious mind can't fathom, but the body mind understands. <clears throat> Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. Push away and uh, sink. And then turn, step in.
allow yourself to feel into that neutral state. And feel all the energy that's circulating. Even in this moment of stillness, there is motion. Take a deep breath, hands come up. As you exhale, disappear the chi. Just feel into that. Allow yourself to enter even more into the present moment. Take a seat. Rick, you got something? Yeah, I mean, usually I can root and settle, but when you had me at the end there move my foot, it did not want to come. The, the tendrils were so deep. I thought I was going to bring up a piece of my floorboard. <laughs> Just awesome. And also this time not accompanied by, the, by my foot feeling like it's made out of cement. It was just totally natural foot, but man it was it was on that it was in that floor just great <laughs> great <laughs> terrific <laughs> good valerie so it was really nice to feel that com uh comparison of when you were pushing away from the earth and then letting that go and then reaching down into the earth um, I mean, I wasn't employing a whole lot of tension when I was pushing away, but the feeling of comfort and relaxation um, when you just reach down, you know, uh, it was comfort. It was just really very, very nice. And the amount of saliva in my mouth was just incredible. <laughs> I had to swallow my spit, you know, it was uh, so good job. <laughs> Wonderful. For, uh, for those who, uh, uh, who are, are not aware of what, what the saliva, it uh, is sometimes referred to as the dew from heaven. It's a, uh, it's liquid chi. And, and if you get a buildup of saliva, and when you're doing your, you know, your qigong, your form, or whatever, it, uh, you want to swallow that and, and allow that to recirculate. But, uh, good. Scott. Um, any specific suggestions when you have one body part that's just not, doesn't want to get along with the party? <laughs> <laughs> you have a recalcitrant there? <laughs> yeah, my, back, my, my little back keeps yelling, hey, kids, get off of my lawn. And <laughs> it's really annoying. Uh, I think it's an opportunity. To get to know your get to know your lower back a little bit better, you know, bring it, make it a butt cake, and uh, <laughs> invite it, invite it to the barbecue, you know it, <laughs> you know it's a uh, uh, yeah it's a, it's an opportunity because we all have stuff, you know, and this is an opportunity to explore, you know, movement. In a, in a heightened state of awareness so that things that have been building up for, you know, maybe forever, get a chance to, to say, me, 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 you're finally getting to me, you know? <laughs> and so you get a chance to, to say, oh, oh yeah, well, 
tell me your story, you know, and and uh, you get to play with that. So I think that's you know it it in really getting into a conversation with it and 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 asking it what it what it needs, you know, to, <laughs> to feel better. So you so you I mean I so you mean really just kind of just focus on that one part and let the rest of the parade go, like focus on one. Well, you, 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 and I mean, that's a really good point. You, you, you establish the, the structure that you want to have and you notice that somebody is just not marching to the same beat. And you, you, you really want to know, hey, hey you know, what, what's going on there, bud? You know, and, uh, and you'll notice, you know, it, there is some part of it there that is engaging in some sort of pre-conscious counter-intention that is something that you established <laughs> at some point <laughs> and thought so much of it that you put it on automatic, that this thing is, is that's, that's something that you, you said, oh yeah, I, I definitely need this. This is, this is really going to help me out. <laughs> and uh, all the stuff that we're, we're holding on to is stuff that we have, we have assembled because at one point or another, it seemed like a really swell idea. And uh, so being able to go back and, and find out what it's doing, what, what, what are you doing there, bud? You know, and it's, you know, can't you see this is, <laughs> this is the right way to do this. The rest of you are wrong. I got it right, you know. <laughs> and then you, you know, you can dialogue with it and say, "Well, you know, how about you try this other thing here, you know, just just for now, and uh, and see what that goes with." So, um, other than that, you know, get a good massage, or uh, <laughs> yeah, there's lots of other things you can do to uh, to do it at a you know at a structural doing level. But this is a more of an internal kind of thing where you actually are allowing this body knowledge to to sort itself out. So Stan, you had something? You're on you're on mute, Stan. You're on mute. Okay. Almost a backward question. I know we have been you know, going over feeling and all that. Uh, are you when you feel, and I have to say that I've been feeling for quite a long time by this time. Okay, but still, when it comes to active uh, feeling, I'm still not sure. Are you just paying attention to that particular area that you're interested in? Or are you trying to, you know, doing anything else? All the above. All of the above. All the above. <laughs> So in a super conscious state, you are capable of doing many, many things all at once. And it's something that it, it seems impossible because the conscious mind can't. And it doesn't want to believe that all this is happening. <laughs> that, that this, this awareness, all these awarenesses are occurring at the same time. And it only sees the, you know, the vapor trails of the jet flying by. It doesn't, you know, it, it's, it's not there with it. So, uh, uh, so all the above, you know, you're, the more you can shift into that mode, uh, you sort things out. You, you know, your body mind figures out what is right for me now instead of holding on to old patterns like you know we we're talking about before the you know, old pre-conscious patterns that that seem like a good idea at the time but maybe not so much now <laughs> yes oh yeah thank you you're welcome <laughs> uh anybody else scott um I, I think it's probably important to point out that you know uh, some of these things you've been doing for a really long time, they can really put up a fight. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know it's, it's an important, 
he has a conversation, you know. You're absolutely right, and and, and you uh, you and you you get to learn a lot about yourself in in the in the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, but it can be, you know. I'm just want to make the point that it can be unpleasant, you know. So it's something that people should be aware of that it's not all roses and unicorns. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, definitely, you know, unicorns, roses, yes, but uh, well worth, well worth the, the, the journey, you know, well, well worth the conversation, because it's you, it's you are getting acquainted with your shadow, you are getting acquainted <laughs> with that part of you, which, you know, is operating <laughs> clandestinely <laughs> and uh is uh has this whole black ops up going on that uh that you you, you weren't really aware of <laughs> and you say oh you know we're gonna do a little investigation into that and see what exactly is going on there cool anybody else okay uh we've got a couple minutes left um let's uh when we stand up again, let's do a little. Oh, get your three pillars in. So we're going to do some short standing meditations, which is um, it's something that you might want to try in your own practice to get because uh, it's something you can do if you have 30 seconds to to uh, to do uh, to, to, just to do something so you can just by by getting into that and seeing how quickly one can adjust and get the chi moving in a given posture so let's say we start with say like a uh uh, pivot on your right heel, step out with your left foot. And we want to get into, uh, feel the ball of the left, set the knee, and then you want to really get into a bow stance now and bring your your left arm in front of you, like as if you're doing a, like a ward off type posture. This is a very simple type ward off. You may do it differently in, in your form, but uh, just, just for now, just to is you're reaching out with your elbow, you're opening up the shoulder joint, you're feeling the ball of the left foot as your, your contact point, you're reaching down through that, reaching up with the crown, reaching with the elbows, reaching with the fingers, push away your, with your left leg, you're coming up and then ah, settle down into that left quad. So now you're really feeling the substantial support of your left leg. And we're just going to hang out here for half a minute. And just you want to feel what that feels like to release down and feel into that yin support of your, your left quad. Push away with your left leg coming up, turn, pivot on your right foot, reach out with your right foot, feel the ball pushing the upset that, and push away with your left leg, right leg coming up, and then ah, spiral down to the left, and then turn, and let's just bring mimic the, the left hand to so bring your right arm out and feel into that you're reaching out feeling that that ward off posture feel the pong jin the expand expanding energy of the of the pong and just feel that push away with your right leg coming up and uh sink into that so we're exploring that real earthy connection that comes from a very active Sun Hua. And feel the effect that's having on your arms. 
Feel that chi that's moving through your body, filling up the whole system. Feel the ball of your left foot. Push away with your left leg. Spiral down to the right. You're loading up your left claw and then turn. Feel what that feels like, like a rollback kind of posture. Push away with your left quad coming up, put your left leg coming up, pushing away and then ah, settling down into that. Feel that yin support. Reach with the elbows, open the shoulder joints. You reach with the crown. Feel those poles in opposition and how that is filling up the whole system. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, push away with the right leg. Spiral down, release, spiral down to the left and turn and move into a press posture, bringing your left hand to your right. Push away with your right leg and Release down, sink into that right claw. Feel the in support. Feel, reach with the elbows. Feel yourself sinking into the earth. Reaching out with the arms. Reaching up with the crown. Feel your, extend your awareness down through your feet. Feel those tendrils reaching down into the earth. Separate your hands, push away with your right leg and reach out with your hands as if there's a push posture. Push away with the right leg, coming up and sink down, release, reach with the elbows, reach with the fingers. Just feel the fullness of that. Hands down, pivot on your right heel, step back. Pause for a moment, feel. Feel the fullness. And step in, take a deep breath and clear. Disappear the chi. Take a seat, please. So it's a simple thing that you can do anytime you have 30 seconds to spare. Just go into a posture, feel that, and be, relax into it and allow your body mind to get familiar with that and to work out the kinks, work out the, the stuck places that, uh, that it uh, is holding tight and say, oh, okay, do I need you? You know, what, uh, what pre-conscious, counterintention is being expressed here. Yes. Boom. Uh, any questions, thoughts before we sign off? Okay, cool. Okay, thank you all so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria.